when I was 14 years old, I lived with my mom, dad, two brothers, and my sister in a rural town in Florida. Overall, I miss living in Florida, but the one thing I don't miss was the constant rain. On one particular stormy Saturday night, where the thunder was so loud it shook the whole house, me and my two brothers had nothing to do. My sister was out at a friend's house. Me and my two brothers decided to play some video games to pass the time. It was only 8 o'clock after all. I remember we were playing some weird PS2 game where all the WWE wrestlers were driving cars and shooting at each other. I don't remember the name, but I remember the exact moment the power went out. I was about to kill my brother in the game when the room went completely dark and the sound of something popping from outside echoed into the room. We assumed a fuse had blown outside on one of the power lines. We went to call for our dad, who was already getting his rain jacket on to go outside and check. Our house has two fuse boxes, one outside attached to the telephone pole on our lawn, and one inside. He asked me to go outside with him to aim a flashlight at the fuse box. When we were outside, he opened up the fuse box and began flicking around the different switches, hoping to reset something. He tried every switch, but the power didn't seem to come back on. He told me to wait there and to keep flicking switches while he went inside to do the same thing with the indoor fuse box. The rain was coming down hard, I just wanted to go inside as soon as possible. As I had the flashlight in my hand aimed into the fuse box, even through the sound of rain pounding down on the ground, I thought I heard something come from the woods behind our house. Like a giant log cracking. I aimed the flashlight into the woods, and for maybe half a second, I thought I saw an arm reaching around from behind a tree. But as soon as the light exposed it, the arm pulled away behind the tree. I shut the fuse box, ran up the front patio, and into the house. I ran to my dad, who was tampering with the switches inside the fuse box in the closet. He entertained my claim, but he didn't seem to take what I said very seriously. He followed me outside around back, where I aimed the flashlight into the woods. The same spot I saw the arm. My dad took the flashlight from me and made his way into the woods. I stayed by the back patio in total darkness. Pretty soon my dad went so deep into the woods that I couldn't see the flashlight anymore. Growing nervous, I inched my way closer to the woods, repeatedly calling out for my dad, until I found myself walking into the woods. It was hard to even hear myself think over the sound of rain pouring down on the leaves above, but I did suddenly hear footsteps not too far away. Once again, I called out for my dad, and I heard him answer. This made me panic. Why, you may be wondering? Because my dad's voice came from a completely different direction than the footsteps. I ran in the direction of my dad's voice and eventually found him walking back to the house. Out of breath, I barely managed to tell him about the footsteps over in the other direction. He told me to go back inside and he'll continue to look around, and so I went inside and locked the door. Me, my brothers, and my mom all waited by the back door, expecting to see him come out of the woods any second. Eventually, we heard someone at the front door trying to open the locked door. I went over, expecting it to be my dad, but my mom stopped me and looked through the peephole. Then she screamed. She ushered me away from the door and told all of us to go upstairs, and at that same moment, my dad came back into the house through the back door. I didn't see the rest of what happened, but I heard my dad yelling at someone outside. When he came back in, he told all of us he saw someone running into the woods. I knew he was taking this seriously now. We thought it would end there, but the next morning, we found that the basement window had been smashed, and there were muddy footprints all over the basement carpet. A large wad of cash that was sitting on the basement bar was stolen, along with a few antique decorations that held some value. The scary part was that the muddy footsteps went up the stairs, but stopped there. Our basement door had a very heavy-duty lock, which may be the only thing that stopped this man from exploring the rest of our house, possibly even our bedrooms. It's been a pretty rough couple of nights over here in Midwest. Flood warnings are replaced with thunderstorm watches, thunderstorm watches are followed up by tornado warnings, and even sirens add a nice touch to this surreal nightly experience. I used to enjoy a good thunderstorm, 
You get yourself comfortable on a couch, grab an extra pillow with a blanket, cuddle up, and enjoy the show of grace and might. Lightning bolts ripping through the sky, illuminating clouds, houses, and tree lines. The sound wave coming with a tad of delay, shaking the window frames and sending a strange tingle through your body. Nature is a powerful force, and it was majestic to see it in action. Until tonight. The forecast was promising a late night thunderstorm. So, I was caught by surprise when I started seeing flashes outside around midnight. Since I wasn't prepared for it, I tried to quickly finish up the Orange is the New Black episode and get myself to the couch. When I got my headphones off, I realized why the flashes seemed so odd at first. There was no sound to follow them. I mean, if the lightning is in the clouds or pretty far away, then yeah, I guess the sound could be missing. But the flashes seemed so... close. I decided to check out the sky of the kitchen window. There's a pair of large glass panels that give you a good, wide-angle view to the outside. To keep my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I stayed away from flipping the switches on and traveled through the house relying on my memory. The moonless darkness of outside gives you that eerie feeling, even if you are inside of the safe walls of your house. But those are just the feelings, nothing else. If it wasn't for the glass, the pitch black darkness of both sides made me feel like the safe walls surrounding me no longer exist, and that feel of safety was slowly crawling away. But the walls did shatter when I glanced up high into the sky, and my eyes met the twinkly stars staring back at me. There were no clouds. There was no thunderstorm with lightning. No, there wasn't. But the next flash, right from the other side of the window pane, did reveal that there was someone five feet away from me, and nothing but a thin glass sheet was separating us apart. In the year 2009, I was spending a weekend with my uncle on his ranch when my parents were renovating the new house we had just bought. It was my second night there, a Saturday, and it happened to be during one of the biggest thunderstorms of the year. I'd say there were at least three crashes of thunder and lightning per minute. And we were in the heart of the storm because the thunder would crash not even a second after the lightning would. I always enjoyed listening to storms while laying in bed. So I stayed up a little later watching TV, just enjoying the ambiance. After the movie I was watching finally ended, I turned off the TV and tried to fall asleep. As I heard the lightning strike from outside, I could have sworn I heard some kind of metallic thud coming from outside at the same time. I didn't pay it too much mind. 20 seconds later, I could have sworn I heard it again. A very distinct metallic thud coming from outside to match the timing of the lightning. I really don't mean to make this sound like a cliche horror story. But my uncle really is a kind of creepy guy, and I was never close with him, even remotely. So for that reason, I didn't feel right going to wake him up. I just tried to forget about it. Now I was getting concerned. What the hell could that be? After the third time, I finally got out of bed and walked over to the window of the guest bedroom. The water pouring down on the window made it extra hard to see what was out there in the dark fields. A flash of lightning momentarily lit up the property, but I couldn't see anything. However, once again, the sound of a metal hit accompanied it. The sound was so close now, it sounded like it was coming from the left of the window at a blind spot. I was going to do something I knew my uncle wouldn't be happy about. It would be a bit messy, but I was going to open the window and peer outside to see if I could see what the sound was. I unhooked the window lock and slid it up and immediately the wind of the storm blew drops of rain into the room and onto me. I stuck my head out the window and looked to the left, and at that very moment, lightning lit up the property once again, and I could see a person dressed in all black crouched down by the outside basement door with his hand raised in the air, and before the sky went dark, I caught the briefest glimpse of what the sound was coming from. The person was bashing at the basement door lock. I pulled my head in and quietly shut the window, making sure to lock it. I was in a panic. I feared he might have seen or heard me. I ran back to bed and pretended to be asleep, facing away from the window. Lightning crashed once again, but this time there was no metallic thud. 
My heart must have dropped as I realized this. I just stayed put in bed for the longest time, hoping whoever was out there would go away. After maybe three more lightning crashes without any thuds accompanying them, I thought it would be safe to go tell my uncle. I turned to face the window and screamed. There was a figure, clear as day, standing at the window, looking in at me. I screamed as loud as I could and ran straight to my uncle's room. He went outside with his hunting rifle, with nothing on but his pajamas, not even socks. He ran around the entire property yelling like a madman, but didn't find anyone. The next morning, we were able to better see the marks on the basement door lock. It was almost bashed open. Maybe three or four more good hits would have done it, according to my uncle. He was proud of me for picking up on it. Luckily, I was out of there that same day. My uncle hasn't told us of any incidents since, so I think he's been okay. Not that we talk to him much at all. I'm grateful I stayed up a little later that night watching that movie, because I may have just stopped a robbery, or possibly much worse. <laughs>